Hello again, whiskey friends. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. So, we are going to do yet another Hard Truth Rye. I am working through this series here. This one's the Malted Rye. If you go back on prior videos, we've already done reviews of the Regular Rye, the Caramel Rye, and the Chocolate Rye. All of those were so good, I had to go and complete the set. So, here's the Yahtzee, and I had to get the fourth rye. So we will break this one down and see if it goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other releases, how it stacks up, and which one I would recommend versus the others. So thanks for joining, everybody. Let's kick off the show. Pour this in the Glen. Let this open up a little bit here. Cheers to Jason for today's Glen for the video. The other cool thing with this hard truth before we get into the stats, this is a really cool cork. It's got like this cool texture on it. Um, and then you got the real cork as well. Gives it this unique look. Like it's almost like charred on the top of it. But with this hard truth, so this is a sweet mash rye. And they have a whole bunch of different mash bills. So if you are getting into hard truth, keep an eye on the number. And they also have the name down here to help you out as well. This is mash bill six, which is the malted rye. It is, I'll make sure I get this right, 54% uh, rye, 46% malted rye. So kind of a unique mash bill in and of itself. You know, the new riff has a six-year rye. A malted rye but that one's still a 95.5 and the five percent is the is the malted the malted rye part so i think that's just kind of an interesting distinction here this is a brand that's coming out of indiana and i mentioned off the top you know this is now the fourth review in the series as i work through all of these bottles to start my 2023 it is 112.2 proof and this is batch one which is a batch size of 10 barrels. And just like the other ones, this is age stated at two years. If you look at it on the website, you know, they say some barrels were two years, some barrels might have been three years, but essentially a, a two year old whiskey. The price on this one I paid, at least in Northern Kentucky, was $95. I am hearing from people that they do see it closer to $80 typically versus the $95. So prices may vary a little bit on that depending on your area. Well, let's break this one down here. We're going to break down the nose, and then we'll get into the palate, and then go into the final scores. Thanks for joining, everybody. So the nose on this one, you know, I've been I've been digging at this thing for quite a few pours here. Usually now, when I before I even get to the reviews, you know, we're talking about a fifth fifth of the bottle that I get through to try to get comfortable with it and really adjust the way I'm thinking, make sure it doesn't open up or change, or it's a me thing. In this particular case, I do struggle getting any unique qualities entirely off the nose. Uh, really just get like a salted rye bread, some floral notes, and then uh, a blood orange. And the blood orange will be a consistent note throughout this experience. I've said the same thing about the new Rift Malted Rye, and I've said the same thing about some Driftless Glens in the past. So it always makes me wonder if that's a, a quality of a, a malted rye or a high malt rye. But yeah, same as my experiences so far. Um, the nose is probably my least favorite part of this experience here. Let's go into the taste. We'll break down front palate, mid palate, all the way to the finish. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for sticking with me this far. Okay. That was actually, that was a really good sip on that one. Um, hmm. Then the finish. Gosh, the finish always gets me. We'll get that. Starting with the front of the palate, let's even go with the mouthfeel first. I mean, it is super creamy. 
That's one of the qualities of this thing that I like the most. It does have this very decadent mouthfeel, coats really well, hits, gives you flavors all over the place. The main flavors that I get remind me of uh, Sour Patch Kids, essentially the ones that are covered in the sugar too. And then I still get in that blood orange. So that will continue to be a note. As I said, um, I expect to just keep finding it. I, I've been really hitting that one over and over again. Okay. And then going into mid palette, you know, not quite the blood orange, you know, maybe it's a little bit of different difference there. It reminds me of orange high C. It is sweet and it hits you with that orange note. I mean, it's just like going to the McDonald's line when I get a sip off my kids' high C's, you know, from their Happy Meals or something. That's what it reminds me of. Other things that I get in there, um, some vanilla sweet cream icing and a slight chocolate note. But still that orange, that orange is really dominating, I would say, throughout this entire experience. Let's go into the finish. The finish brings a whole bunch of the qualities from the the first two tasting notes that I gave there. The blood orange is back, and I do get it combined with the chocolate. So it's almost a, a chocolate-covered blood orange. The sweet cream frosting icing is still there. Even the orange high C, honestly, it, it's right there. It's real sweet still on the finish. That's what lingers over and over again is that orange high C note. Getting some other fruits. I've, I've been having a problem pinning down how I want to describe those. It's just almost a, a fruit punch medley even. Maybe that even leads me back to the whole high C thing. But I'm still going to stick with the orange more than anything. If you combine that orange note with the, the icing, then you're getting into kind of a dream sickle situation if you want to articulate it that way. At the tail end of the finish, and it's essentially where I'm at now, so 30 seconds in, I'm still tasting it. It turns into a uh, sea salt taffy note to me. Still going to say the orange flavor, but a sea salt taffy. There's just this little bit of brininess. It's almost like that there's this part where the, um, the sweetness dies down, and then all of a sudden it becomes salty. All right. One more sip, and then let's go into the final thoughts. Yeah. The other thing about this one, and this is going to be reflected in all the scores that go into the scoring system behind the scenes. This is a pour that escalates and gets better each step of the experience. So I was least impressed with the nose, um, started winning me over with the front of the palate, won me over a little bit more mid palate, and then it gets to the finish. I'm like, ah, there it is. There, it's giving me something really delicious and clinging to me, and that mouthfeel shows up and how oily it was. So that's the part of it that I think did hold up this score just a little bit. So let's get into the, the notes here. Now, on the channel, we got a scoring system that has primarily three components. There are a whole bunch of metrics that make up these components. But ultimately, it gets rolled up into a flavor score. That's worth 40% of the overall score. Experience, that's worth 50%. And value, that's going to be worth 10%. When we're talking about the flavor, once again, it's just how enjoyable was the nose, was the front of the palate, mid palate, into the finish. Just how enjoyable was it each step of the way. Experience is the more technical score when we're getting into complexity and mouthfeel and balance. And then value is just simply, was it worth the price paid? Um, and that just has a little bit of a chance to move the needle here and there. So ultimately, we're at a score of 68. You know, the main things that shined on this one were the finish and the mouthfeel. I think those were the things that really held this one up. And that all adds up to a 68, which is a good score. You know, anything in the 60 to 69 range is classified as good here. Just for context, the other... Uh, hard truths were essentially around mid-70s. So this is the lowest scoring 
of the four hard truths that I've had the last couple months. Uh, I am going to plan to blind all these and see if my ratings and the blind play out in the same way when they're going head to head. Would I recommend this? This one I gave just a four out of 10. I do think if you're going to experience hard truth for the first time, this is not the place to start. I would start with the caramel rye or I would start with the regular rye. In which case, the people that I would recommend this to are people that either like malted ryes and high malt ryes in general and want to try something new. People that want to get into hard truth, get into it now. See where it's at in two years so that we can talk about this two years from now when it's hitting you four to five years and we can talk about how phenomenal it is. Do I plan to buy another? No, not on this one. Not At least not where it's at today. We'll see if they age it up. We'll see what happens with the price over time. But at least where it stands, this is one that'll probably be a one and done for me until something changes. I'd much rather go buy another caramel rye or buy another one of the regular rye versus this one. So that breaks down the scores of the hard truth malted rye. Once again, very enjoyable finish. So I'm going to get another sip here while I'm talking. Had the realization that, hey, why don't I just enjoy the finish while I'm talking? But very enjoyable finish on that. But ultimately, when you are comparing all of them and thinking about the high price of these type of bottles, when you are supporting a new distillery like this, you know, $95 for this. It's just a one and done. Glad I got to experience it. But ultimately, I'm going to wait until it gets older or something changes before I dive into this particular mash bill again. If I'm going to recommend any alternatives to this, it would be something around Driftlet's Glen Rise, or if you have access to it, the six-year malted rye from New Riff. And, and by comparison, that one's you know, $50, $60 too. So that's just something else, else, else to keep in mind. But that ends all the thoughts on the hard truth. Keep an eye out. I do plan to do a blind of all four of them just to see how it aligned to my scoring system. Well, thanks for joining me today, everybody. If you've tried this one or if you tried any of the other hard truths, I would love to hear about it in the comments, particularly about this malted rye and what your thoughts are. So let me know in the comments. But until next time, have a good one, whiskey friends. Bye, everybody.